the views I express are my own, uh, and I do not represent uh, my organization or employer. However, Dr. Watt Coburn uh, cleared it with her institution, but I want you to know a few things that happened between Friday and now. What I'm seeing in general, you know, from the healthcare standpoint, is that a lot of the hospitals are now developing clear-cut protocols. They have already started doing that before all this. They started the process, but now they're becoming public. They're becoming standardized uh, within each institution. Now, every hospital has their own way of doing things, um, but it's there. So when you have a symptom and you come to the healthcare environment, we know what to do or how to handle the situation. There's an algorithm there. So that's great, right? That gives at least a little bit of organization to that fear of a surge or fear of chaos uh, and for the healthcare system. One great thing that is happening and one positive thing that is, is, is wonderful is that if you look at society right now, and I, for, as long as I can remember, we've been divided by so many things, right? Uh, politics, um, you know, race, creed, whatever it is. Um, flat earth, not flat earth. So the thing is, uh, our society right now is so divided, but this virus has somehow brought us together in a way. Every day I'm seeing more and more unity in the communities, uh, amongst each other, uh, a sense that you know we're all human and we're all in this together. And that's the I irony of it. A virus sort of brought us together by separating us and, and, and isolating us so we can slow down a little bit and focus on what's important. And I think that's what we all need to get out of this. Um, and I want to just thank everybody for watching this video. Um, and I'll do everything I can to keep you guys updated, keep the questions coming, positive, negative, doesn't matter. Uh, I will do everything I can to um, educate myself and, and you guys. All right, thank you. All right, thanks Dr. Walk for doing this. Um, so I'm gonna sit here. All right, so everyone, this is Dr. Walk. Uh, Coburn. She is the infectious disease guru here at our institution. You're an infectious disease doctor dealing with this on the forefront. What is it that people are asking you? and What do you see the biggest concerns right now? So I, I think the biggest concerns are, you know, I have recent travel. I just came back from a cruise. Yeah. I've been in these areas or, you know, sometimes from healthcare workers who've want to get tested because of what's going on. Okay. Um, so we are still, you know, right now in Houston, we're in the midst of allergy season. So a lot of people are going to have a cough and a sore throat. We also have still circulating flu around and there seems to be another type of virus going on around that gives you kind of fever, malaise, and uh, running nose. It might be besides the, the SARS-CoV-2 that we're starting to experience. Um, Right now, Houston is probably in what we call the low to moderate risk um, because the community cases are not a lot around, at least what we have seen on the testing area. Uh, but it is also what we're looking, seeing in the hospitals. We haven't had a lot of, you know, patients like you see in Italy or in Spain or that are, you know, are crashing down. Um, one question that I got from, from, from a kind of the, 20, 30 year old population is, you know, uh, when should I get tested? Should I be tested or anything? And so right now what we're trying to do is we have limited number of tests. So we want to test those people that actually need it. So it's someone that has a fever and a fever, you, if you have a temperature of, you know, 38.3 or 101, that's that plus upper respiratory, uh, lower respiratory symptoms. So it's a dry cough. Dry cough is lower, okay. Yeah. So dry cough, you're not gonna be producing a lot of phlegm or stuff like that. Okay. You're not gonna have a drippy nose. You're not gonna have symptoms that are mostly on the on the face. It's gonna be deeper? Deeper. Remember I told you it goes deeper because it's smaller. I'm sorry. Yeah. So so it is deep and you know, it, that's why you, you find. Um, and so, you know, you might experience a little bit of fatigue. Um, some patients in the pediatric populations we've seen that have some GI symptoms like nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Oh, wow, but, okay. But, you know, those, those are the data that we're getting from Seattle and, and California. How quickly is the, is the data changing? Because it's like something I did like, so read like a couple hours ago or a couple days ago, it's changed. So where it's like drinking like from a fire hose. I mean, I wake up with Corona, 
make my day corona and I sleep with a corona. <laughs> so um, it does. So how quickly is, for example, last week or the definitions of who to screen um, was not cruises. And as of last night, CDC put cruises as a level three. Wow. And that cost a lot of things. So so the data is, co- is, is changing every 24 hours. Wow, okay. Um, I think we know more. Um, once you, I guess, once you get hit by the wave, it's, it's kind of more of a survival mode from what I'm hearing in California and, and in Seattle and, and New York. New York, yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, at this time, is is not to to panic. Is to remain calm. And if you don't have any exposures, then you just stay home and away from large crowds. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, now that the Houston area has closed the restaurants, you can order in. You just pick it up, pop the trunk, put the. They close the restaurants. Yeah, so they close Crap. the restaurants. Yeah, so you can have. Um, you can call in, so you can either have it. Oh, like but you still have like takeout and. Yeah, it. takeout. So okay. you just pop the hood and Thank they God. put it in. All so, right. <laughs> so yes. Yeah. Um, so you know, it, it, it is part of the social distancing and the idea of the social distancing. The, this uh, control surge as it yeah, comes. Yeah. Okay, and then a little bit more um, questions that I got were about like families, mothers, fathers. For example, one of my friends, uh, she messaged me saying like, "Oh, I have a old. I have my mother." My grandmother at home, they're older, and I have my kids. Do I need to separate them? The kids carrying this thing? No, you know. so, so, what, so that's part of the social distancing or, you know, kind of the physical distancing. Uh, so, for example, if you're, if, if, if you're a healthcare worker and you have this, you know, this type of family where you have older parents or people who are immunosuppressed, you might like not to be in the same area. Okay. Because, as, you know, you're going to be more... Um, um, more susceptible to getting it because you're a healthcare worker, right? Mm-hmm. But in the house, as long as the kids, you know, you're not gonna have uh, parties, you're not gonna have people come over and everything, those are your little same tribe, right? Gotcha. So that's fine. And you want the grandparents to take care of the kids because mm-hmm. they don't have school now. <laughs> 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 so so that's your little tribe. But if you're gonna introduce something outside from that little tribe, like the neighbor kid or the one that lives, you know, two streets down. This that is might, awesome. Tribes. Might, yeah, so your tribe kind of have the so same So we're going thing. back in history, huh? Well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you have your community, you know who's in your community, and, and, and that community, you know who's going to be sick, right? So, yeah. Um, you know, so if you're a healthcare worker, you're the one who's going to probably be introducing things because you're going to go back and forth to your work. Yeah, right? that's freaking crazy. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do now? So as people, I, so as people, you know, I mean, you, we go back to you know living at home and watching Netflix and you know feeling cabin fevers and you know <laughs> things like that. Um, there's tele telecommuting, there is teleworking, um, ways to do. I mean, you know, the the economy still has to function. There's a lot of things. I think the hardest be the hardest hit is is going to be the tourist industry, the restaurant, the wage wa- you know yeah, the workers. Wage workers. Um, you know, the news say that they're working on a relief, but those are the people. Okay. Um, you know, watch each other. If you have an elderly, you know, um, someone elderly around your, your neighborhood, kind of your small, in your street, kind of check on them. Uh, you can do things for them. I, you know, like uh, they're going to open the stores for just elderly going at those times so they can pick it up. Or the other thing, you can pick up the things and just drop them off in, into the fourth porch. You know, awesome. yeah. things, things that you don't have them to go out and expose. Okay. Um, if they go to church or the temple, um, now there's a lot of dispensation by all the religions not to go and gather in large places. You, you okay. can still pray to the higher being and God at, at home, you know. Right. I, I mean, it's special times. I have a question. If I, my, my parents are like in Florida, and if something in their if their health condition something happens, I need to fly there. This is the last question. Thanks so much for your time. If I have to fly there, what do I do if I have to fly? Well, so the the thing is is that flight might be interrupted. Uh, you might not catch a plane. So the other thing is you might have to drive. Okay. Um, because if they're gonna, you know, if they start shutting down the the, the, the domestic, airlines, yeah. That because now you know from my heard um, the the airline industry is just putting less. Flight. Just air for, yeah. So you you can fly, but yeah. you, you might we might not Just have the ability. standard precautions. Hand washing. So hand washing. Um, take your little Clorox wipes, clean up the area. <laughs> I mean the same things you would do. Oh, and sorry. then um, Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, and then um, you know there's less people in the plane, so you're 
practice in social distancing. Okay. Thank you so much for this. Yeah. Can, based on the response, is there, if I get more questions, can I catch you in the hallways while you're sure. rounding? Not a problem. Appreciate okay. it. Thanks no so problem, much. No. We just touched our hands. We're going to oh, wash them now. Great. Yes. <laughs> now this is what we do. There you go.